Hey guys, what's up? It's Jim from 1.Samples, Samples, and um, before I dive into it, just make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. That's it. Anyways, today I'm going to give you a video about what you need to know about kicks and like making kicks, especially for like bitch raw style drops. You can use it for euphoric hardstyle as well, but it's just a really, really great method to make good kicks. And uh, it's not necessarily about going from scratch into a kick that you really like. No, it's just like you have a kick already, which I feel like a lot of people already know a little bit how to do it. It's just um, like hard driver. A really dope uh, tutorial online but what you do is you take a 909 you can make it in serum you know you have this thing here and then you just add it to a pitch you have like this sound here you add this to the uh, volume as well then you just play it and then you add distortion and then you add eq before the distortion um <laughs> So like that's the basics of kicks and uh, you keep doing that and doing that until you get like a crunch sound and if you have the crunch you go from crunch to a kick and we will still make a tutorial about this but I just wanted to talk about what to do afterwards because what people tend to do is take their kick so let's say I have a kick ready right here. I put it in my mixer. Uh, this is by the way a template you can find in Galactic Hardstyle Vocals. It sounds like this. And as you can hear, this kick is really... I'll leave a link in the description, but the kick is really dope, especially in pitching. And what people's mix goes wrong in, and the, like the whole song, is when they pitch kicks. So like the, the basic kick sounds pretty cool. Like if you take the normal kick, this one here, and you loop it, it's fine. But you know, you, because you already have the sound. But then you pitch the kick, and it gets... Uh, sounds bad. If I try to pitch this with uh, famous methods like nimble kick or just taking like this, what people tend to do, like they separate the talk right there and then they make a unique tail and they only pitch the tail and you get this sound. Which is fine, you know, it still sounds pretty okay and based on how good your kick sounds, it gets better. But I feel like it loses some drive. So what I'm going to tell you is like a method on how to pitch your kick without um, screwing it up and even make it sound better. First, I'll give a few basics on how to pitch kicks. And you do this by having nimble kick, contact, or standard stuff in your DAW. So the first thing, which is standard pitching. How you do this is you take your kick, uh, you duplicate it. It takes a lot of time to do this. But what you do is you take the first part, then you take the second, third. So basically you have four bass lines. Then you separate bass from the talk, just like this. Then you make this bass unique so you can change the pitch. You do it for this one as well. And you do it for this one as well. Then you copy these, you duplicate them like this. So now you only change the bass. So if I go three up, then I go five up and then I go two down. Then I want to put the pitching method at E3 mono and this one as well. Otherwise it sucks. Listen up. As you can hear, if I put it at auto, it's like this compared to. And that's not dope, man. That sounds whack. So and you can like experiment with whatever. As you can see here, it's not really dope, so... E3 mono is where it's at, but this is not really dope. So then you can add nimble kick, and that's really, really easy. But that's just a plugin, you drag and drop your thing into it, and then... And as you can hear, it's better than this. So the pitching method in FL Studio, like the way you can change the pitch, is not really that good. Or you open contact, and how you do this is you have the bass. Uh, let me just show it. You drag and drop the kick into this thing then you get drag and drop it again so then you call one tock and one bass it needs to be exactly as long as the tock in your kick so in this case i read i drag and drop it in my playlist and i read how long my tock is so in this case it starts at this time and it ends at this time which is around 120 milliseconds or 100 so go to contact and say my tock is 120 milliseconds the case should be at zero the sustain should be at zero and release should be at zero then i go up and you say i don't want to track it that's it you disable track then you go into contact again you go to the base part and there you do the same thing except you um put it at uh, the release zero sustain goes here doesn't matter decay to zero and then the hold is um doesn't matter 
It's just a tag that needs to be at the tock. So what you just made is uh, you recreated the kick where you separated the base from the tock and then you only have the base. And then you put this at tracking, put it at Omni so that you can play the, the sample when you play a note. And then you put it at Time Machine 2 or whatever you want. And then you can pitch as well. <laughs> Right, so you have this sound. Well, that's three methods to kick a pitch, uh, to pitch a kick. And everyone does this. And it works, but it's not the method you do. Because this kick here sounds like a finished kick. And this one as well. But then you add the lead to it and it loses its power. It's really static. So I'll show you a method right now how to work on this. So what you do is you have the baseline of your drop. Uh, you pitch the kick in that way. And you have this sound. And what you then want to do is stretch it, stretch the whole sample, so the bass still gets, like, stretched out. And then you kind of find the sweet spot for this particular sample, so... And then you get, like, this sound into the kick. It's really weird, but it's dope. So instead of having, like, this sound you have yourself, make it like this. Then you render this, so what you do, file, export, wave file, save it into your desktop, and then you load this sample into your playlist. And then you get this sound. So this thing is rendered, right? Then you put it here, and suddenly you have this sound. So what you really need to do then is make an automation clip of the gain. So what you want to do is create an automation clip of the gain because you want to remove the talk from this thing that you created here because you only want the bass part. So you remove it with sidechain. So automate the volume so that only the bass still is playing. So you remove the tock. Then you route this thing that you just created into thing in the mixer here. Then you also want to render the tock separate from this one. So you have the tock and it sounds like this. So all the effects off. And what you can do now is like make the tock longer, uh, change it, do pogo, do all crazy stuff to it. And um, so now you have your tock and the bass separated. And then what really starts uh, changing your kick for the better is that you can change the bass separated from the tock. And in this case, we have this sound. What I then do is make this thing here where I am controlling the frequency so i look up the key of the kick in this case it was e so i go into key e and put it at like e5 or e6 whatever and then i typically make one at e4 or e5 and e6 so the octave 5 and 6 i automate this one and i do this by this knob here moving this one create automation clip and you can see these here so that means that during the kick these frequencies will open up Compared to, sorry, I need to remove these effects so you can hear what happens afterwards. So, and that adds drive. So what I then do is remove some 300 hertz because it's really muddy, 200, 300 hertz. I boost this up a little bit with this thing here. So the sub is the same effect. I made another automation clip and I want the first punch to have no bass and then at the end get more bass. Like this. If you want to see more kicks and get really high quality kicks, make sure to go into our sample packs, Criminal Raw Style Kicks, Volume 1 and 2. Volume 2 is really, really big. It has like 70 or 50 really cool Raw Style Kicks. As you can hear, it's a really good pack. You can even get the kick project so you can learn from it. It's really easy to get into this pack and you can learn so much from it. Make sure to check it out on our website. As you can see, here's the kick project. Let me load it up. There we go. And then... You get the crunch, everything you need to get the mixture. You can uh, change the sample. Anyways, make sure to check it out. Where I boost it a little bit, remove this a little bit, and then I add Wave Shaper. To a level that's comfortable. And then I add a limiter again to remove like the beginning sound, so side chaining, and I add this. And that's the kick now, like the bass part. Then I have this punch ready. And what I do here for this one is boost the key. So I find E5 and I add distortion. So in this, this is like a pitch talk. So this works well. But if you don't have a pitch talk, just add the talk right there. No worries. So this, and then I add this. You get like this rebellion kind of uh, pitch effect. And then what you really want to add always is like a snare. This thing here. Compared with this. Give some like a raw style effect. And then you render reverb for the punch. 
and you create two. So you have one here. And this is like a soft one. I put it at mono a little bit. Add some volume automation so you can automate where it opens up. And you do another one for this kick then. And that is really distorted with the same key. So like it's in the key of the song. So it sounds like this. And suddenly you have this sound. Which I didn't have for the first kick because I had this. And what I want is this. Much better. So combined with the bass, you get this. And then come the final effects because you can let it put together and you put uh, some little bit of distortion. Then I put ozone in the standard mode and make sure that the sub is mono and a little bit of the bass is mono as well. Then I remove 300 hertz. And then I boost this up. And that's it. So now you have this kick suddenly. Where we went from this. That would have been my final kick, right? This is my final kick. And I'm sure that if you would have created this kick, you would be like, okay, damn, it's a really dope kick. I could put this at like the first drop and it's like, oh, fine. I had a screech and whatever. It sounds dope. So then you start to pitch it like I showed and then it doesn't sound good anymore. So, you know, whatever method, even if you put it in nimble kick with a dope pitching method. It's, yeah, you know, so what I did is open stretch and nimble. So make the sample a little bit longer right here. Then I render it, make sure to sidechain the bass separate to the talk. So you have a bass part and you have a talk part. And then for the bass part, you put it into this thing here. And then you start adding drive to the frequencies, like the key of the song. So you can see I'm boosting E in this case. If it was a song in G, you put a key. G and boost that part. What happens now is because I have this thing here, compared to building a kick and then adding a melody, I already had my melody done, right? So if I go into like break lead, I go into lead. As you maybe see, it really doesn't work that well. If I would have used the normal pitch one, it sounds like this. And now it sounds like this. Which is much better. And that's because you now have your melody and you have a kick underneath. And if I want to change something, I can now finally do it. Because I have a whole preset made for this specific kick. So I can change frequency. Right, if you want more drive or... If I want less drive in my punch... Or I want to boost it more, you can do... So this is like a really, really good idea to have uh, compared to making your kick and saying it's done. When you have your kick finished, don't say it's finished. Then make this thing, which I just showed. So pitch the kick, render everything you have, separate the talk and the bass one more time, and then create buzzes for it. Because you want to make a kick that fits with your melody. And I can safely say, I think that only like atmospheres or Devon Wild, like really good people, uh, producers, they know when their kick is ready. But for the most people, including me, I don't know when my kick is ready. And you know this when you create the melody on top of it and then just start pitching stuff, like changing stuff in your kick. And you can do it because you made a preset based on your kick and you've added like distortion in front drive and whatever and you can change it and play around and change make a better sound yeah so this is like everything you need to know about making kicks better when you already have a kick make sure to choose this method make sure to drop whatever you want to see in the future as well in, in the comments so people can respond to it and say they want that as well i hope you liked this video if you did comment like and subscribe please it helps a lot and thank you for that i hope to see you in the next video uh, have a nice day